The Class 165 Network Turbo is a seal clubbing diesel multiple unit introduced in the early 1990s. For nearly 30 years, it has been running on suburban and intercity services alike, serving areas such as London Puddington, Reading, Oxford, Birmingham and of course, a Denham and Tame Parkway. Has the train stood the test of time, or has it been given the short stick on the railway? Let's find out. For all intents and purposes, there are three variants of the network turbus that we will be looking at today. The 165-0, 165-1 and the class 166. Spoiling it now, the 166 is the best of the bunch. More on that later. The 165-0 are units that are operated by Chiltern Railways. Running as either two or three car units, they can be seen running on sensible services such as London to Aylesbury, or on shuttles to Prince's Risborough, or on stupidly long services such as from London to Stratford-upon-Avon. I once rode on a 165-0 from Birmingham Moor Street to London. Never again. Please. The seating is passable for short to medium journeys, but the interior overall doesn't offer much in the way of facilities. At the very least, the 165s have been recently modified, so that they are somewhat viable for the disabled, with a bigger toilet, tip-up seats and an actual space for a wheelchair, so that's nice enough. The information displays are quite bare bones, not giving out information such as the current time, or if the train is delayed. Only basic info such as the calling points and destination are shown. I know this was done to match the displays used on the 168, but still. It's worth pointing out. Refinement and comfort isn't too bad, though obviously inferior to similar electric trains. Again, I have no problem riding them for outer suburban journeys. Now let's look at the next version. The 165-1 differs from the Dash 0 in a few ways. They have a higher top speed of 90 miles per hour as opposed to 75 miles per hour. Yes, the Dash 0 can only do 75. Perfect for a main line that was upgraded to 100 miles per hour. Then again, it's not like the Dash 1 has room to talk as it runs on the 125 miles per hour Great Western main line. Other major differences include luggage racks, more of the units being three coaches, and having an area dedicated for the stowage of bicycles, but only on the two coach units. Because of course, the 165-1 can be seen running on more sensible services than the Dash 0 more of the time, though it depends on how you define sensible. I remember seeing a two coach unit running on the Puddington to Oxford Express service. Keep in mind that it was replacing a 5 or 9 coach cucumber. The phrase of it's better than nothing only works if people can actually get on the train in the first place. Ignoring freak situations like that, the Dash 1 can be seen operating in the Thames Valley, the North Downs Line and more recently, running in the areas around Bristol, Gloucester and Portsmouth to provide a needed boost in capacity. The seating layout and overall feel in the seats is largely similar to the Dash 0. However, 3-pin and USB charging points are provided which is very welcomed. Refinement is pretty much the same also. I still wouldn't want to ride on these units for a few hours, but at least the extra bells and whistles are a welcome bonus compared to the Dash Zero. As I said earlier, the 166 is the best of the network turbo units. Firstly, they have two toilets, one disabled size, and one which is pretty much a covered with a sink and water basin. Secondly, they have more dedicated luggage areas, which helps as they are seen on the demanding services to Gatwick Airport. There's even a small area of 2 plus 2 seating with a small area of folding seats. I don't know why, but I really like these seats. I could stand around folding them in and out all day. Thirdly, all of them are 3 coaches long. Now you don't have to worry about Takar antics. Like the Takar 165-1, they also have bicycle spaces. These are located in the centremost coaches and are welcomed. Unless you're obtuse like me and have a Dutch bike. If that's the case, good luck trying to fit it in. The majority of the 166s, like the Dash 1s, have been demoted to run on the lines in Bristol. It's debatable on if the Thames Valley Express services have benefited without them. Considering what they currently have instead now. Apparently, they'll be replaced on the North Downs line in the future by a train called the class 769, but I have yet to find any evidence of their existence. Please help. Conclusion. 
the network turbos aren't too bad overall as trains. Not the best, but not the worst either. Their biggest problem is being put onto stupidly long services or services that are far too demanding for them. Now you know my thoughts on the network turbos. Go out there and ride on a Takash Alford to Reading service in the morning or evening peak and enjoy being compressed into the finest pace known to man. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed this little parody of Slip Phantom's Unicum Guides, just with a railway related spin onto it. Obviously you're not going to tell you to like, favourite and subscribe because you're humans, not sheep. You should be able to think for yourself. But if you have any recommendations of trains I should consider reviewing in this style in the future, I'm open. Somewhat. I feel like making these videos will help break the silence of these new show videos. Because they can take a while to make, or well, these are quite easy. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it, and thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.